Just a sec. Hello, you crazy awesome dancer. If you want to master your sensual bachata and you don't know where to start, or if you already have the fundamentals and want to learn something more, then this video is perfect for you. You are going to get 10 moves that will get you started with your sensual bachata. Of course, this is not an in-depth tutorial, but we are going to point out the most important techniques. Some of these moves are already covered in other videos, so be sure to check the top right corner. Did you know that 72% of our viewers aren't subscribed? Help us change that. We have more than 200 tutorials and if you want us to make more and more, gently touch the subscribe button. If you want to support us more, check out our Patreon page where we post exclusive videos. So here's a list of our actual Patreons. And the last tip, remember that if this feels too slow for you, you can use shift and stop or shift and comma to speed up or slow down the video. The first move is the actual basic step, the sensual basic step. If you haven't danced bachata before, you know, like not sensual bachata, but normal bachata to say so and you haven't mastered you know the fundamentals like the posture how to use your knees your hips your upper body in order to have a fluid and natural basic step the sensual basic step might be really really hard for you here's the sensual basic on counts so one two three four five six seven eight or without this hand like going like one two three four five six seven eight the difference between the normal close position to say so like this in bachata and the sensual close position is well that we're <laughs> close <laughs> The key concepts to remember are our knees are a little bit flexed, you know, everybody has a natural click and we intertwine them, meaning we dance on four lines. My line, her line, my other line, her other line. Yeah, so we don't stay parallel, we stay a little bit to the side and we flex the knees and you see we intertwine our knees. Next, our hips are a little bit backwards. We don't push our pelvis towards our partner. <laughs> So remember here, no fishy fishy. So when we stay in the sensual basic, you see we have some space here. Of course, we exaggerate now a little bit because when we dance, it's more natural yeah, than when you're standing static. But the key point here is don't push towards your partner. When doing the sensual basic for the arms, we have many different positions, especially for my uh, left and my right. Yeah, so we can stay here. She can stay like this. I can hold it. I can go on the back of her shoulder. I can grab her arm. I can go a little bit closer. I can keep my hand in the air like you don't care. <laughs> you can... I can hug him like here. Yes, I can also use both my hands on the shoulder blades. You see, there are many variations and usually you will use one of these according to what you want to do. But for now, just choose one and practice it like that. What we recommend is either going for the shoulder blades, you know, like a basic position. We actually teach it like this in order to be able to hold the frame and don't think about the hands and to focus on your hips and feet. Remember that you always lead with your body and not with your feet. Meaning, especially in the basic step, from this angle, I'm not going like this, you know, like... <laughs> this is one of the core fundamentals in bachata and also in salsa. We don't go like this, we go with the body and the feet follow. And probably the most important thing here is to connect with your partner. If you don't have connection, you cannot do anything. So be sure to connect properly in order, you know, like to feel like one dancer instead of two separate dancers. You... Girls, here it's very important not to move your hips more than your leader, at least not as much as to interfere with his leading. Remember, on social dancing, it's much more important to feel good than to look good. You are not in a competition. And the last thing, guys, never ever dance from your knees. We are not doing the twist. We're gonna do the twist and go this is a very common mistake, going something like this, you know, like... Yeah, I know it looks weird, it feels weird, and it might be even worse than we made it look, especially for the followers because they feel like I, they are being kicked or something like that. In the basic, don't do this. Before we move on, here's some different angles on music. Now we are going 
going to go over the head roll. Remember to check the top right corner for an in-depth tutorial about the head roll. This is how it looks on counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are going to use this simple move, you know, like going from a carissa to say so, to illustrate the head roll, but remember that there are many positions and many ways of using the head roll. If you want us to make a separate tutorial, and that, that's gonna be, let's say, a big one because there are many variations, let us know in the comment section down below. We want to see the head roll variations. The main leading direction here is to the side, but it's important to create a circular motion. So, in order to do that, we are actually going to start a little bit towards the back. So I'm going to exaggerate now, but it's small, you know, it's not going to the back and then to the side. After we do this, going towards the side, you know, going to that circular motion, we pull towards us and raise our elbow as leaders in order to give some space to the follower to do the head roll. On the social floor, this is a good precaution to lift your elbow if you don't want to pay hospital bills. Girls, don't anticipate the move, don't do it on your own. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> For the leader's head roll, things are much easier. Guys, because we lead, we want to do the head roll, so here we just, you know, like get the hand, put it on our shoulders, and we use a little bit our intention, our body, in order to make her understand. So we go a little bit to the side and diagonally down and do the circle. So the lady will know to help us and she will understand that we want to do our head roll. On counts goes like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. As said previously, we use these examples, you know, like going into the head rolls because they are simple examples. But there are many ways to go into a head roll, many different hand positions, body positions, angles, stuff like that. So be sure to understand that we focus only the technique for your actual head roll, not with what to do with your hands. Ladies, this doesn't mean that we do nothing. We need to pay attention to our partner, adapt and help in order to create a comfortable move for both of us and really enjoy the dance. Number three, the chest roll on count. So we are gonna go from this position and one, two, three, prepare, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do it one more time from here. Three, four, basic. Remember, we prepare on four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, tap, and we go into the basic. The chest roll is a very common move and it's used in different combination, but it's very important to master it on your own before you do it in partner work. For the leaders and for the followers, it's really important to understand how to do the movement before you lead it or follow it. This will help you understand the signals. So for that, we already have a tutorial. Check it out. It's in depth on how to do the chest circles or chest rolls. But here are some tips for the leading and following. We are going to go like on a half basic until four and on four we are going to make that preparation. So one, two and three, four, I prepare. But because we are talking about sensual bachata, we are going to do it a little bit more closer. This will help us to block her knees, her hips, so that the girl understands, okay, something is going on with my upper body. So we are going to get closer and do the same thing like one, two, three, and on four, I will grab with my knees and also push her to the side. You'll see in a second when we change the angle. But for now, remember what we said about the head roll. The direction is to the side, but we want to make a small circular motion, meaning I'm not going perfectly to the side. I would go into isolations maybe. Instead, I'm going a little bit towards me and then to the side in order to make her understand that I want to do a circle. So this is four and I go, five, six, and on seven, eight, I wanna finish that circle, but also finish the steps, like seven, eight. One, two, three, four. You see, I block her with my knees, I grab her a little bit and also prepare the upper body. I go towards me a little bit, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so this is in order to, you know, finish on the right step. Of course, you could do it in place, you know, do it like, five, six, seven, eight, however you want. The main idea is that you have to finish the seven, eight with a tap and also do that circle. Ladies, remember to isolate and move only your chest. Also, for a better isolation and for more balance, you need to put a little bit of pressure on your left leg like this. So we are here on four, 
And even if I'm on my tap with my left leg, I put a little bit of pressure to the floor in order to be able to isolate better. I just can't believe we together. When talking about the hip roll, we are talking about the same technique that we apply to the head roll and to the chest roll, meaning that we lead to the side, but we do actually a small circular move. You can also do this move from different positions with different hand placement, but the technique is the same. So on counts, we are going to pick the simplest form. So going like this, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And from this position, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here on the hip roll, we also create that sideways signal, but of course we want to create a circular motion. So even though, let's say the main signal is to the side, we actually create a small circular motion. When talking about the hip roll, it's important as well to block the opposite body part. So if we do a hip roll, we kind of block the upper body. And that can be done by the leader or by the follower. But in both cases, the follower should help us. So here are some variations. For example, you, do it, you go into a basic step from your simple position and you go with both hands down. Like one, two, and you go down. Here I am not touching her chest, her shoulder blades. So she will understand because I have both my hands down. Okay, I need to block the upper body part. So I do my hip roll, five, six, and I go back. Another variation would be, you know, like going like this, you know, and just putting my hand here and doing that circle. But in this case, I kind of block her from this hand. And another variation would be doing it from a hammerlock. The same thing happens, boom. And we have another variation, for example, when you go with one hand down, like you go with your left hand and you push the hip roll and you block with the one that's staying on the shoulder blade. So all these variations actually uh, follow the same principle. You need to block the upper body part in order to move the hips. For the followers, it's very important when you do this hip roll to really stretch your body, yeah? Like one, two, three, four, and I really stretch my legs and I stay straight with my back, like five, six, seven, eight. Also, it's very important to not bend from your waist towards your partner. I only push my chest a little bit forward, but I'm not bending from my waist. <laughs> Number five, side to side chest isolation. It's very important to understand how to move your chest side to side. This is one of the moves that, well, we usually use in the warm up session of, you know, the training or the class or the workshops, etc. It's important for both of you, the leaders and the follower, to understand how to isolate the chest. On counts from a basic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, prepare one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Additional variations, we could do this continuously, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but usually it's not used like that. Or we could go like one, two, and just move and finish with another basic step. Two tips here that will make you understand the move better and actually learn it faster. Using both hands, we are going to go to side to side. We are using both hands because this is the way we teach it first. It's the most simple way of understanding it. So it's important to think like one hand pulls while the other pushes, but we are not going like this or in different way. We synchronize and coordinate both of them. Also, it's really important not to squeeze her, you know, like, yeah, we put a little bit of pressure, but let's say she will feel a gentle firmness. Yeah, so for example, we are on eight here and I'm using both my hands at the same time. And I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to show you my back also, but I'm going to exaggerate this because I'm also leading from the body. I'm not only doing this, I'm doing this a little bit. Yeah, so just from eight, I am here. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. I'm also going, even if maybe she does the move a little bit bigger. Yeah, the key thing here is lead from your body. And the second most important thing, you know, we talked about how to do it, but how do we signal her, okay, don't go, don't step. Well, I actually block her like this. I use my knee, my foot, 
I put it in her path so she understands, okay, I'm not moving. And also I create a little bit of pressure. I'm going to exaggerate this, only the preparation on eight, and how do I block her? So let's go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, I've pushed her a little bit on eight, make sure she is on her left leg, and I also block her here. And this will make her understand, okay, I'm only going to use the upper body. Of course, ladies, remember to move only your chest. Don't go with your whole body. Don't go like this, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one. Hips side to side on counts. From a half basic, we go one, two, three, I prepare and I go five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course, here we also have the variations where I could go continuously, like we did for, for the chest side to side, going like five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and getting out or many other combinations. We could go into combinations, but today we have moves. We are going to go in the central position. We are going to get really close, yeah? And on four, I am preparing with my knee. So I am squeezing a little bit, you see? When we were talking about the chest, I was going with my hands, but now we're talking about the hips, I'm going with my knee. And then with my hands, I block her upper body part, I squeeze a little bit and hold it in place, and then I only move my knee. Remember, it's really important here not to do big moves, not going like, you know, like, like this, <laughs> like this. <laughs> Small moves, guys. What I recommend you to do when learning this move is going on that three moves and a pause, like a tap. So going like one, two, prepare. You see, I prepared to the side and I block like five, six, seven, eight. I blocked here a small pause and one, two, three, tap, five, six, seven, eight. For the ladies here, it's very important to maintain the connection at your legs, like this. I'm going on basic, one, two, three, and when the guy is preparing, is going with uh, his knees to my right, I follow with my left leg and create here a connection. And then I go into the move, like five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and do the basic and get out. As you saw, it's very important to keep the connection with your knees throughout all the moves. Move number seven, a combination between the chest side to side and the hip side to side. So we're gonna call this the chest hip move. This is going to be a fast one. We just combine the techniques and we try to alternate between moving the chest and the hips. The chest hip combination on counts like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We go from a basic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yet again, I prepare the chest. I also grab this time. I'm not only blocking, I'm also grabbing a little bit her right knee. And I start with the chest. I go to the side, then with my feet, my feet, my hands, hands, feet, feet, hands. And on counts, it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I tap and we exit into the basic. It's really important when you move one body part to block the other one. And leaders lead small moves. You have a tendency to do like really big moves and the follower is, is often, it's feeling a little bit uncomfortable doing like really, really big moves. So one body part is moving, the other one is blocked and lead small moves. the standing wave. For this one, what we call the standing wave and the actual full wave, we have a tutorial. So check it out in the right corner. And for this example, only this one, we promise to do only moves, but in this one we have to, 
you know, step on the rules a little bit. We are going to do a standing wave on one, two, three, four, and to get back on music, we are going to do a mambo on five, six, seven, eight. You will see what we are talking in a second. Guys, remember we have our hands on the shoulder blade. This is the technique we teach first because it's the most, let's say, comfortable, is the easiest to understand. So from here, remember we are leading a standing wave. So we just go into the wave and we release. Girls, be sure to do not anticipate here. If you do not receive the signal to go down with your wave, just release your hips and finish with a tap like this. Like one, two, three, and four. In order to go back on music in the right way, we have to do a mambo. We're gonna show it from here. So for example, we do a basic step like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I prepare, I start my standing wave. One, two, three, and I release. And we would go on five instead of one. So that's why here, just to make an exception, we do a mambo to go back on one, two, three, four. This is one of the first methods we teach the wave, starting only from the standing wave, because it's a little bit easier to focus only on doing this rather than going down and coming back. But don't worry, this is number 10. Of course, there are many variations regarding the hands, the position, the leading and following, but this is the simplest one. Be sure to master this one as a way of practicing it before moving on. Number 9. Body Roll. It's the same technique as for the standing wave. The main difference or you know what we add to the standing wave is that right before we finish the standing wave, especially for the followers with their hips, we are actually as leaders starting the next wave. So it's like going from one wave to another without having you know that full start, you know, like doing a standing wave, finishing it and then starting another one. We do a transition between them and it looks something like this, of course, with the body you'll see in a second. Girls, remember what I said regarding the hips when doing waves. It's important to finish the first wave with our hips, even if we receive the signal to already do the second wave. So I'm gonna illustrate now and I'm going to exaggerate a little bit the signals, but watch for my hands and her hips, meaning I will do this when she almost finishes her hip motion. So from here I go, boom, she starts to finish and I begin again, and I begin again, and I begin again. So this is the body roll. Of course, we've exaggerated now a little bit. You, you can do it like really, really small, like boom, boom, boom. The body roll on counts and then on music. Let's go from a basic step. Two, three, four, five, six, slow body roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you want, you can do it even faster on two counts. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Really important leaders, as always, as I am saying, lead from the body. I'm going to exaggerate. Even I am doing like small body rolls, like ah, ah. It helps you with leading better, other than just doing this. full wave. So again we have the full tutorial in the top right corner. Remember that even if we call this like a basic wave or a basic move, it's actually quite hard. The thing is the wave is one of the moves you first learn when you know going into the sensual bachata. So that's why we put it here onto the 10 basic moves. Be sure to understand how to do it yourself before trying it in couple dancing. It's much easier to lead it and to follow it, but especially leading it if you know how to do it. It will help you. If you don't know how to do a body wave, it will be, let's say, almost impossible in understanding, really understanding how to lead a body wave. And of course, you know, following it. And the body wave on counts, we're gonna go like one, two, three, go down, five, six, seven, eight. Or another variation in which we use our left hands leader to go down and up. We go like one, two, and I push down a little bit and the hips back. And now I pull with my left hand and release with my right. Five, six, seven, eight, and one.
are my love and you are my heart And we will never, ever, ever be apart Oh, we fight on Coco Remember that if you want to watch more videos and to be notified when we upload something new to hit the subscribe button and enable all notifications. This one is really important. Otherwise, YouTube won't send you a notification. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day. See you in the next video. The chest roll is a very common move that is used in different... As you saw, it's very important to keep the connection through all the move from one to eight and the other eight. <laughs> Girls, be sure to do not anticipate. If you do not receive a signal to go down with your eighth... <laughs> with your eighth? <laughs> <laughs> the chest roll, meaning that we lead to the side the main, let's say, you the importance of the warm up because we usually, you usually uh, 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 because we usually this. This is going to be a fast one. We just combine the techniques. <laughs> really hard, you know. Uh, the wave, it's. Be sure to understand how to do it yourself before trying. <laughs> Be sure to understand how to do it yourself. <laughs> Three, <nine. laughs> Three, <nine. laughs>